Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Out of the Ordinary into the Extraordinary. I'm Robert Taylor, coming to you on WMTV. And I'm Pamela Hill Taylor. And as always, we bring you guests who are uplifting, enlightening, entertaining, and we've got a lot of entertainment for you today. Oh. Welcome to the show, Harry Jarvis. Nice to meet both of you. From That's Life Entertainment. That's right. Now, what does that mean, Harry? That's Life Entertainment. That's Life Entertainment. You know, I would actually, I came up with the name while I was in school at Specs, Hog, while I was going to Specs. Um, what happened was, in the first, actually, the first day of school, we had our first, we had an orientation, and they asked everybody in class, uh, what do you want to do after you graduate from Specs Howard? And pretty much everybody said, I'm going to go get a job in the industry, in the film, radio, and industry, in news industry. Yeah. And I told them I wanted to start my own entertainment news network. And so I sat around while I was in school during my uh, time in between classes and came up with the name That's Life Entertainment. Don't ask me how, it just sort From of popped out From that famous song? There. Yeah. What's that? That, that famous song? Uh, Frank, Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. That's yeah. Life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's great, Life Entertainment. Great, uh, yeah, I name. might have been that. Who knows? But, uh, but, I, but, but it was just a catchy name, and I thought it worked, so that's what I came up with. It's a great name. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that encompass? What do you do exactly? Uh, uh. Uh, what I decided to do is I decided to come up with a name, which I came up with, That's Life Entertainment, and I opened a studio in Southfield, Michigan on 12 Mile, and basically what I wanted to do is I, want to enter, I wanted to report on entertainment news around Southeast Michigan mainly. Uh, a lot of great artists here live in the city of Detroit. Yep. Some of them we go do. unheard, yeah. unseen. And I really wanted to cover that area of entertainment and bring that to the people. So um, that's basically what it encompasses. And, uh, and I also wanted to cover national news and things like that as well. And did a lot of freelance reporting, interviewing people around town and that sort of thing. And uh, of course, you're not that far away still from Specs Howard Campus, right? They're right there in Southfield's area. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. That's a great school to go to to learn uh, mm -hmm. TV production uh, and the audio biz. Right. Yeah. I've met uh, actually a lot of the teachers that you have at Specs Howard that you learn from are currently working in the industry. Uh, I had a broadcast writing teacher at Specs Howard. Her name was Lisa Cipriano. She was also an anchor and radio host and reporter for WJR News AM radio. And uh, Alicia Z oh, yeah. uh, is the daughter, uh, Specs Howard's daughter, and she, I believe, is a reporter over at WWJ 950 AM. Yep. So, and Renee Vitale was actually my, uh, she was my representative who enrolled me into the school and gave me an orientation mm -hmm. through the whole school, showed me around the place, showed what the school had to offer. And she's actually co-hosting with the Jay Towers at 100.3 Fresh FM. Wow. So a lot of people who worked at Specs Howard in the faculty, uh, teachers and alike, uh, all are current people in the industry. So you learn from the best people with the experience in the industry. So I think probably one of your uh, number one uh, all-time favorite interviews has to have been with Reverend Jesse Jackson. Yes, <laughs> who would ever, <laughs> if somebody would have told me first day of school, that one day you would get out of school and interview Reverend Jesse Jackson. I would have thought they were crazy. Uh, actually, what happened was is I overheard on the radio that Reverend Jesse Jackson was going to hold a Rebuild America march in downtown Detroit, a big event down there. Yeah. Uh, Detroit had, at that point in time, that was a couple years ago, had an unemployment rate of over 50%, which is very high. So he held this big event down there. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go capture this event. So what I did was I invested it in a broadcast camera when I got out of school. And I took a friend of mine, Sharita Scheller. She graduated with me in my RVF 12-09 class at school. Mm -hmm. And she was my camera lady for that day. And we went down there, and we were interviewing just randomly people on the street and talking to them, talking to them about the unemployment rate in Detroit and how they felt about the economy in Michigan yeah. and so on. A real so, slice of history. What's that? A real slice of history. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And we thought, yeah. wow, let's go down there and try to capture this. Mm -hmm. So we're down there, and there's reporters from all major networks, CNN, MSNBC, 
Fox, and we're just a, so I'm just a small time guy with a camera down there shooting amongst them. So it was really exciting. Uh, major competition. Major college. I, I felt like I couldn't compete with them, but it turned out to be different in the end because I was one of the three that got selected by Reverend Jesse Jackson himself wow. to interview him. And it was sort of prearranged by Martha Reeves uh, from Martha, Re Martha and the Vandellas. Oh, yeah. An old Moldtown great. So. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, how did you get to do that? Were you, were you, uh, you already connected to Martha Reeves? Actually, what happened was, is while. Reverend Jesse Jackson did this little march down the street, and there must have been over 100 reporters there following him down the street to Campus Marshes Park, I believe yeah. it was. Yeah. And when we got down to Campus Marshes Park, uh, I ran into Martha Reeves in the middle of a crowd of people. She was just wow. there right in the middle of everybody. And I said, Martha, I would love to. And first of all, I said, you look like Martha Reeves. And she says, <laughs> actually, I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I uh -huh. says, wow, isn't this great? I said, what are my chances of interviewing you? And she says, a pretty good chance. Wow. She goes, I'm going to be joining Reverend Jesse Jackson on stage, and then I can meet you backstage after he does his speech. Wow. Yeah. So I went back by the security back there leading up to the back of the stage, and I told uh, a police officer that I'm here to interview Martha Reeves. So he went back there and checked with Martha, and then Martha said, go ahead, let him in. And when, she, when I got in, uh, I went to the back. Uh, Jesse Jackson, J Reverend Jesse Jackson just happened to be about 10 or 15 feet away, and there you have it. Uh, wow. He picked me out of about, I'd say, 20 reporters. Wow. And they were all major news network reporters. And he picked me, one of the three, to interview him, and I got to interview him. So. Now, you were telling wow. us earlier, you were stood next to a CNN guy, and you thought Jesse yeah. Jackson was pointing to him. Actually, yes, because he yeah. was pointing to the people he was going to give an interview to. Yeah. Uh, and he pointed my direction, and I knew the CNN guy was next to me, so I thought, okay, he's giving it to the CNN guy. And then he says, no, you. Wow. So, and, and I looked at Sharita, my uh, girl that was doing the camera for me, Sharita Scheller, and I says, is it really me? And she, yeah. she goes, I think, yeah, he's yeah, telling yeah. it's you. And You're it. So I went up there, and I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, I remember the old saying, you have to look bad before you can look good. Well, keep in mind, this was my very first interview right out of Spex Howard. Oh, my gosh. And I can tell you, when I look back at that footage when I got back, uh, I look bad, but you know what? <laughs> the interview was great, and you did I was it. just happy to have gotten the interview, rather yeah. than look bad or not. So what a first it. interview! How yeah. amazing, how amazing is that yeah. first interview with a famous person? I mean, that's great. Very famous yeah. person. Yes, yeah. yes. So that but, was. Uh, who would ever think that would be your first interview? Amazing. And I, th I think after that, I, I looked at Shrita and I told her that day. I said, you know what? I says, this is where I want to be. This is what I definitely want to do. I want to be yeah. out there around the people. I love gathering news footage. It's just the whole thing is just I knew I had arrived at a place in my life where I wanted to be. Yeah. And I knew that going to Specs Hard was no mistake. Absolutely. And this is for real and I and this is the first time I've ever ex experienced being out there with a camera with my camera girl with all these other reporters and I just felt like I was all part of this big thing and it felt really good and, and getting that interview with him really topped off the whole day. I didn't care what happened after that. So. Well, I have to ask, did you get to, to interview Martha Reeves too? Uh, and then after, well, after I finished interviewing uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson, obviously Martha Reeves told me she would give, that she would allow me to give her an interview. Wow. So I sat down at just this big, she was just sitting at this big folding table underneath the tent and I sat down and we talked about the Motown days. And, wow. Uh, wow. And who happened to be with uh, Martha Reeves? Maxine Powell. Oh, yeah. Maxine Powell was Barry Gordy's uh, developer and creator of the artists. Yep. Meaning that she would tell them what kind of clothes they should wear. She helped dress the Temptations. She helped pick out the clothes for the... Uh, Dinah Ross and the Supremes. Oh, yeah. So those dresses that all that the Supremes wore and all that, that was all part of Maxine Powell. Mm, image maker. Yeah, she yeah. was the image maker. Yeah. Barry Gordy would send the artist over to her. She would build, She would make up their image, what clothes and all that stuff. But you got the idea. So I got to interview her, and she's, I mean, she's a legend in Motown. So wow. here I got to interview Maxine Powell, Martha Rees, and Reverend Jesse Jackson all on the same day. Wow, that's a real coup Yeah. for yeah. your first yeah. time out. 
That was yeah. amazing. Your first, you know, interview. Famous, I guess it was people. just yeah. being in the right place at the right time, Absolutely. and it was a good call to go down there. So it was a good day. Now you, uh, now you, uh, you've extended all that, and you are actually doing uh, music videos. You're mm -hmm. going down to Nashville, Tennessee. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Well, actually, the original plan was not to go to Nashville. Uh, what happened was is. Uh, Actually, it started out, uh, I was doing, uh, I had a friend come to me and said, uh, there's this manager that wants to have you shoot a music video for one of her artists, and that uh, artist was Sista Otis. Now, Sista oh. Otis, if you remember uh, Crystal Bauer Sox from American Idol, uh -huh. she was the second runner-up on American Idol. Well, wow. si Sista Otis was her biggest inspiration an influence in her music, so she invited Sister Otis to her uh, American Idol show. Anyway, I shot a music video for uh, Sister Otis. Fantastic. And did some shots with her at the Magic Bag in, in downtown Ferndale. And then it moved from there to, uh, I ran into this girl that was going to be playing the hoedown in downtown Detroit. Her name's Ashley Allison. Uh, I ended up shooting a music video of hers, a live show at the uh, Emerald Theater in Mount Clemens, and then her mother, her parents brought me a bunch of footage of previous shows and stuff like that, and I created a music video from one of her original recorded songs. And she was only 18 years old at the time. Matter of fact, uh, recently she just did two shows on 99.5, two radio shows mm -hmm. uh, on the radio. So she's doing really well in Nashville. She's still down there. Her mother's down there with her. So she's and originally from this area. She's from, actually, I think she's from the west side of Michigan. Yeah. But she's staying in Nashville. And then, and then I ran into, a, I discovered another girl. Uh, on, it was on actually the same website, 99.5. They, they were showing her doing the hoedown in 2011. And I, deci and I decided to listen to one of her songs, and I thought she was phenomenal. So I... I looked at a few of her videos on YouTube. She didn't have any music videos to speak of, just live videos and stuff like that. And I thought, wow, this girl's so great, I want to work with her. Yeah. And her name's Molly Hunt. And so I contacted her through fa via Facebook, and then she sent me to her dad, because her dad was basically overlooking her career. And she lives in Nashville, too, with her mother, pursuing her career. So the, fa the parents basically moved to Nashville with their daughters to help them pursue their uh, career in music, country music. So I shot a live video of hers, and then in, in the process of that, I met, uh, ended up going to Nashville to meet uh, Ann Wilson, CEO of AWMG. Wow. Record <laughs> Publishing. Now, you told me also, uh, during that meeting, you get to meet one of the top country writers on the scene today. Yes. Uh, uh, her name is Tammy Heiler. Uh, I actually... Uh, made an arrangement to meet Ann Wilson in her office in, on Music Row in downtown Nashville. Music Row is where all the major recording companies are. Sony, BMI, Curb, Warner Brothers, uh, RCA. Every recording company in the music industry is on this, they call it Music Row, which is a, a whole area of town. It's like a square mile there. Yeah. And they have recording, each company has a recording studio there. Anyway, I, I, I had a meeting with her on Friday at 1 o'clock. And we were just sitting in her office, and we were just talking. It was an initial meeting to get to know her. And this lady come walking in, and uh, she, she has a songwriting staff. All they do is write songs for major country artists. So anyway, uh, her name's Tammy Heiler. She sat down, and I had no idea who she was. Uh, she says, hi, my name's Tammy Heiler. I write songs for uh, Ann Wilson. And it turned out to be, I didn't know at the time, but she was a she was she was a friend of uh, Colin Ray, and she moved to Nashville. Colin Ray, Colin Ray is a, was a big country artist during yeah, the nineties, yeah, yeah. and she wrote some hits for him. And she's wrote uh, major hits for a lot of major country artists. So here I was sitting with this legendary amazing, songwriter, amazing and it was just interconnections. Yeah, yeah. It really I mean, it's just one amazing. thing leads to another. It's just dominoes. And we're going to uh, see. What's your, that? We're going to see some of your work here coming up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Some of my work. for some fine entertainment here. Yes. Uh, and take out the show with it. So, uh, coming up, we got about uh, 13 minutes of your work that we yes. will be showcasing here. And um, we want to thank you for being on the show. And, Harry, if uh, somebody uh, wants to get involved with you in any way with your services, what kind of stuff could you offer? 
for people? To offer them yeah. uh, music videos. I can shoot uh, commercials for businesses. Uh, I can help uh, get a show off the ground. Matter of fact, I just got an offer to do a documentary on the Forgotten Seniors, which will be aired on, T on PBS in Fantastic. January. I'm working on a documentary in January. That's excellent. And, uh, and then I'm currently working on going into production for a music video for a recording artist named Danny D. He's a, a well-renowned uh, Rod Stewart impersonator, and he does a lot of his own original music. So, Well, thank you so thank much you. for coming on the show. It's a pleasure. Nice yeah, to meet all you the too. best thank to you. you. Uh, don't go away, because we'll be right back with some fabulous footage from Harry Jarvis. That's Life Entertainment.